to our Book Talk segment today. A woman who's written a really interesting book. It's as timely as well as we are uh, approaching the 70th anniversary of uh, the bombing of Nagasaki. It happened on August 9th, 1945. The name of the book is called Nagasaki, Life After Nuclear War. We're joined today by Susan uh, Southern. I believe she's out in Arizona today, and it's good to have you with us today. Thank you so much. I'm really glad to be with you. How hot is it where you are? It's, uh, it's about 95 here in Oh, Minnesota. my gosh. Uh, we're in a, <laughs> oh, yes. We're in an excessive heat warning at 112. That's what I heard, yeah. I have I've a nephew out in that area, so uh, I, don't, I don't envy that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not fun. Your book, Nagasaki, and, and for people of a certain age, now my father was in World War II. He wasn't uh, in Japan. He was in the Philippines, but he would have had to go to Japan if that hadn't happened in 1945. So a lot of people still alive wow. that still know about it. Of course, the sons and daughters as well, but, but it really is a lot of history to it that I guess we don't know about, right? That's why you wrote the book. Yes, frankly, um, John Hersey wrote his... Um, his excellent account uh, in 1946 about the bombing of Hiroshima, so that would have only been able to cover the first, uh, you know, say, eight or ten months of post-nuclear survival in Hiroshima. And really nothing has uh, uh, told this, no one has told the story uh, of, of uh, post-nuclear survival over seven decades. And indeed, the story didn't end with the bombing. You know, for us, uh, in the United States and for people across the world, the atomic bombs represented, correctly or not, uh, is debatable, but they represented the end of the war. Uh, but for the people beneath those atomic clouds, you know, a new life as, as uh, survivors of a, a nuclear weapon uh, had just begun. I think we all heard, you know, after the, the war ended and the U.S. went in there and did a lot to help rebuild uh, those cities in Japan, but that's pretty much all you really heard uh, as far as that went. You didn't hear about the, the lives of the people that sadly were affected by it that, that survived the blast, right? I mean, they, a lot of them died later on, but uh, the, the survivors, uh, they, they had some terrible times. They sure did, you know, and we didn't we didn't hear about it. And, and part of that, you know, there, there are many aspects to why America didn't hear those stories. But the, the truth of the matter is that, um, you know, after the bombing, in, in the weeks and months after the bombing, the... Um, really extreme symptoms of radiation exposure started to erupt for thousands and thousands of survivors who developed purple spots on their bodies and um, lost all of their hair and uh, and their gums would swell and bleed and many other uh, really uh, their bodies were ravaged by the radiation and um, and often within a week from the very first symptom appearing, they would die. And uh, that went on for months. And then over many years, uh, the uh, cancer rates would escalate and, and spike and uh, uh, for different kinds of cancers. Uh, so they've, they've had quite a, an ordeal. Yeah, 74,000 people died, and then uh, within the first five months, and another 75,000 injured, right? I mean, that, that's the number uh, just from that. Is, is that that's still accurate? Yeah, just, just in, yeah, that's right. Just in the first five months, yeah. Say, and that doesn't include then all those who died later from uh, the radiation related. Yeah, I was going to say, that doesn't include maybe 10 or 20 years later, people who got cancer. That may have been a cause from that, right? Right. Right, and they know that they know that the radiation was a direct had a direct impact, but on on cancer rates because they can compare it to every everywhere else in Japan. But they but what they can't know is each individual survivors whether e any individual survivor's cancer was due to the bomb or not because some people get cancer anyway, and it, it was a really difficult aspect of, of post nuclear survival for for the, those who had had made it past the initial bombing and the initial radiation cycles because when they would get cancer they never knew and and they never knew because they knew rates rates were so high they never knew what if when their time was going to come mm. it was it was very uh, difficult for them what was your process uh, susan for uh, for doing the research on this i know you, you took uh, took quite a few years to kind of put this thing together you actually interviewed a lot of people but what was your process for, for getting information about about the folks in nagasaki well i i met in 1986 i was living in washington dc and i met uh, a Nagasaki survivor and 
and uh, became his interpreter for two two days. So that was my first introduction to uh, firsthand stories about survival, and his story is so dramatic. He's, he's one of the five survivors whose story I tell throughout the book. So dramatic and so profound and very, um, I was just in, I was just, very uh, moved by it, and I, I felt like it needed to be told. Um, w- once I decided to write the book, I, um, I identified and located uh, other survivors in Nagasaki because, um, you know, the nuclear war experience is, is unique to each individual, and I wanted to have enough experiences to paint a picture of different ways people um, lived through the bombing and in the years after. And um, so in 2003, I went back to Nagasaki and started my uh, official research for the book. Um, And I went five times over the next eight years interviewing and doing follow-up interviews, not only with those five survivors, but also with others whose stories are um, part of the book, although they may not be named, to help flesh out the larger picture. And I also met with um, physicians who treat the, the, the survivors and um, archivists and specialists who were able to give me a lot of um, information that, that helped me tell the larger story of, of the city's um, past 70 years. Um, and then I spent another uh, four years or so after that Um, finishing the research on this end and finishing the translation of all the interviews, Mm. uh, which took a lot of time, and uh, and then writing the book. Were the folks willing uh, initially to talk to you? You you hear, of course, a lot of World War II veterans in the U.S., you know, they just didn't want to talk about it uh, until maybe after a while. They reluctantly would. Did you find that same uh, same with the people you interviewed in Nagasaki? Most people in Nagasaki, most survivors, are like the veterans you're describing, they do not speak about it uh, almost ever, uh, if ever, and even with their families. Um, There are a small number in Nagasaki and Hiroshima who who made uh, individual personal choices for various reasons that were unique to their lives to begin to tell their story publicly. And so the five survivors who I, whose stories I tell, um, it was not hard for them to begin to tell their stories, but what was so lovely and meaningful to me was that um, as I went back over and over to continue my follow-up interviews, they began to reveal um, parts of their story that they don't tell in their public addresses. And um, I felt very privileged to be given aspects of, of their stories um, that I could then take and uh, and um, bring to life in in my book. Yeah, well, it, uh, it tells a story, like you said, that uh, many people have never heard, and uh, and I know people under a certain age, uh, they've only heard about World War II from uh, hopefully history books and hopefully in school. But this is going to give a whole new perspective to it. And the name of the book is called Nagasaki: Life After Nuclear War. Hopefully, we'll never have that again. But uh, good to know uh, to have this written down somewhere where people know what uh, the actual uh, physical effects were. I think that's going to uh, that's going to be a very important uh, book to have. Thank you so much, Doug. I really appreciate it. Do you have a website you want to give out, Susan? People get a hold of the book or contact you? Sure. Um, my website, uh, which has both how to contact me and information about the book itself and more about the survivors is www.susansouthard.com and my last name is spelled S-O-U-T-H-A-R-D and, um, and I, I look forward to, um, to hearing from people if they'd like to um, connect with me. Great. Susan, pleasure to talk to you again. Uh, congratulations on the book, and hopefully we can talk to you again. Thanks for being with us. Thank you very much, Doug. If you'd like to order the book we're talking about, please go to DougMilesMedia.com and enter the author's name in the Amazon search box. Thank you for listening. Please come back soon for more conversations here at DougMilesMedia.com. This has been a presentation of Doug Miles Media, all rights reserved. You can listen to or download previous programs at iTunes, Stitcher.com, or Doug Miles Media.